afternoon everyone and welcome to my kitchen I am in my kitchen today making a pierogi bake a chicken pierogi bake and I thought you know this would be a great thing to show my audience because it's really it's a very easy dish to throw together it's a little time consuming but you will be so thankful because it is so yummy so for those of you that are new to my channel hello Rachel my name is Tammy Treyer, and I am with TreyerWilderness.com and also TreyerWildernessAcademy.com. And my family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho. We focus on a very self-reliant lifestyle and love sharing our knowledge with other people. And I enjoy getting on here and getting to know everybody. So today, as I said, I am in my kitchen. I am making um, a pierogi bake for my guys. Uh, today is Saturday. We normally don't work on the job on Saturdays, but they are working on the job today trying to get things ironed up there and ready to roll for next week. So we can also get out and do hunting on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday for our cow season here in northern Idaho for elk. So you're hungry? I'll be right there. If only. No kidding. I would love to have you here, Rachel. That would be awesome. Sitting by my nice cozy fire, I am drinking hibiscus and cinnamon and ginger tea that I threw together. Hello, Michelle. And it would be perfectly cozy, and this is really, really yummy. Really, really yummy. Um... It's so easy to make. Like I said, it's time consuming, but I will go out of my way to make this. This has been a lifelong favorite food. Um, my mother used to make me homemade pierogies, and I still do the homemade pierogies, but this bake makes it a whole lot easier. When you do the pierogies, you have to wrap potatoes and onions and cheese, and um, we never put the meats in. That's what makes the bake nice, too, is you can throw the, your meats in. You can put sausage, hot dogs. Um, we do organic hot dogs every once in a while, but today I am making curry chicken. I boiled up chicken breasts, and when you boil up the chicken breasts, they get really nice and tender. And then when the water cooks out of them, and I put seasonings, um, garlic, onion powder, and some seasoned salt in it, but we love curry. So I added honey and Dijon mustard, that's what I was just adding when I started videoing, and the teaspoon of curry, and it just gives it such really good flavor. But anyway, my mom would make these pierogies, and when you wrap the um, potato and onions and cheese and butter, mind you, I don't give up butter for anything, and I never will. Um, just have to have butter. <laughs> so anyway, you put all that in a dough pocket, and then you um, we would fry them up in a pan, and actually not fry them. We would we would boil them up. She would put a sauce plate or a. Uh, um, like one of your smaller plates that you would put a piece of cake on instead of your full-size plate. She would put that in the bottom. Sorry, my heat's too high here. Um, she would put that in the bottom of a big pan and put water in and then put the pierogies, homemade pierogies, on top of that so they wouldn't stick fast to the bottom. And that way you could easily get them in and out. But you'd have to nurture them and you'd have to make a whole bunch. Where this way, if you have a lot of people that eat a lot of food, which I do. I've made two chocolate skillet cakes back to back and they're gone. I've made them two days in a row and they're totally gone, which is perfectly fine. That's why I like being in my kitchen, but I like to know that I have enough food. So I'm going to show you my potatoes. This is a normal batch of potatoes, mind you, but this is my pot of potatoes. Okay, it is a big pot. There's my pot for the chicken. There's my massive pot for my potatoes. And as you can see, it is full of potatoes and onions and lots of butter in there and my hand hand tool um, but I make sure I have a lot of potatoes and by doing so I will transfer this into another baking dish or some for me anyway because I'm gonna put other cheese in mine other than what I'm going to use for the guys but I'm gonna throw everything in probably in this pot for the guys add the cheese, add some more butter, and maybe a little bit more butter, and did I say butter? And then I'm gonna add the chicken into that also, and all you do is bake it. Now I did forget to mention something. In order to make this a pierogi bake, what I do is I make pot pie dough, which I'm gonna give you that ingredient, uh, the recipe for that. It's two and a half cups of flour, 
and you use three eggs and a bit of water and um, a bit of salt. So a pinch of each. Um, let me just see here. Somebody said something. Angela says hello. And hello, by the way, I missed you jumping on there. Just started frying five pounds of hamburger to make different meals. Smart. Very smart. And Michelle, who is that just popped on below you, is saying that she has lots of potatoes too. So I definitely need to add this to my menu. Yes. And Michelle is another one who does a lot of pre-planning with her meals and makes a lot of things Ahead of time, as a matter of fact, she's been doing that for weeks on end as of right now, putting things in her freezer for her winter food storage. So um, being able to make things in batch is a really good idea. If I had a crew that didn't eat quite as much, I could put half of this in the freezer, but my guys will devour this most likely all this evening, if not for tomorrow's lunch. So I have big eaters. They work hard. But um, the pot pie dough is a two and a half cups of flour, three eggs, a little bit of water, and a little bit of salt. Um, the water I add just as I need to to get the right consistency. And what you can do with pot pie dough is you can roll it out and cut it into nice thin pieces. That's what most people do with pot pie. I don't do that. I grew up, I like the chunky dough balls that are kind of dry on the inside but wet on the outside. It was, I think, an accident at one point that my mother did them. She probably just got tired and grabbed her little flat pieces and crunched them up and threw them in the, in the thing um, or had leftover dough. Anyway, instead of going to the extent of rolling it out, and it's not that I'm lazy. I just This is a, a big meal for us, and, and I've got lots to do always. So I try to make things as easy as possible, but I also like to make them the way I like them as well. So making the dough balls makes it really easy. Instead of making a ball, I just take a fork into my dough batter and just pull out a, a ball of dough and I just flick it into a thing of boiling water. So I am going to cook up my dough balls quickly after I cut up the chicken. And then I can just throw the dough balls into this mixture and mix it all up good. And I want to show you too what I'm going to do with the chicken breasts. I have a Tupperware scissors. So I'm going to turn these off in a little bit and let them cool off just a little bit. And then I'm going to cut them up instead of getting a cutting board dirty and another knife dirty. I'm just going to use my scissors. It's really easy. You can quickly cut them up, put them into the dish. And then I will repurpose this pot, wash it, and put my water in here and cook up my dough balls. And then you just blend it all together in a baking dish or in the potato pot. Like I said, I don't. I try to repurpose my utensils and my baking dishes in my kitchen so I have less dishes to wash. We aren't fancy. It's not like we worry about the pretty dish on the middle of the table. If I have guests, sometimes I will do that, but a lot of times the way we do things, it's kind of like a smorgasbord. You come over, you fill your plate in the kitchen, and you go sit at the table um, just because of the variety of different things that we offer sometimes. So it's a really easy dish to make, and it doesn't take long other than your cooking time to get each thing ready and your baking time is really not that long. I bake it till the cheese is melted that it gets a little that the potatoes get a little brown on top because of all the butter and and then I serve it. What are they called again? Um, these are pierogies. Um, a pierogi it's a pierogi bake. A pierogi is a dough pocket full of potatoes, cheese and onions. Mashed potatoes, cheese and onions. And um, it might be more of an eastern, an east coast thing because I mentioned pierogies here last night and the local people that we were visiting with never heard of pierogies. So it may be an eastern thing, east coast thing. But um, what makes this a pierogi bake is that I'm putting it all together. I got the dough, I've got the potatoes, I've got the onions, I've got the cheese, lots of butter. And then you can add meat to it so you have everything all in one dish. It just makes it really convenient, really great, and um, if you have leftovers, it's really great to enjoy as a leftover also. So you can also, um, Angela, cook up the pierogi. It would just be um, using the pot pie dough. You roll it out and fill it with potatoes, the onions, the cheese, and then just um, close it up that it looks like a uh, half a circle. You can pinch the ends around real nice and then... 
um, boil it in water and it's ready to go. You serve it with hot butter drizzled all over it and you can't go wrong. Okay, so West Coast. I am West Coast also, but I'm an implant. Um, I grew up in Pennsylvania, so it's probably a Pennsylvania Dutch dish or German dish um, that I've now brought to the Pacific Northwest. Alexa said now she wants pierogies. Gosh. <laughs> Yeah, I hear you. I've just like, well, maybe that's tomorrow, right? Or did you already have dinner planned for tonight? <laughs> but it's it it's a time-consuming dish, but trust me, it is so yummy. And I wasn't quite feeling good today. I wanted to get out hunting, but I've got pain in my head again. So I thought this would be great. I'll make this up. I've got an article to write, and this way I can also lay on the couch and kind of keep checking this while I had the potatoes and things boiling. Um... But I also, as I mentioned, I was using my hand tool to mash the potatoes. We live off grid, so I don't use electric appliances. And this is what keeps my arms in shape and helps me regain my muscle strength. But this is also a treasure. Um, my lighting is a little dark because of where I'm located in the house right now. But this is a Bakelite handle. It is an old um, type handle that was used... Oh, probably in the early to mid-1900s. Um, they might have been earlier than that, but I love the look of these old um, tools. I like these types of handles. I have, I, I seek them out when I'm in the uh, thrift stores. Uh, I love, cranberry is my favorite color, so I always like the red, but I have all my utensils that we use in on our at our table and for our meals are old Bakelite handled uh, utensils. Awesome. Angela has her mom's old masher. Awesome. I have one hand masher. It's the only way to do it. I know. They just turn out better. And plus you don't have stuff flying all over unless you've got like some really good muscles going on. But when I always used the blenders, you'd have stuff spritzing around and stuff. But I just, I don't know. I just, I like being able to use the old tools and just doing th things traditionally. And not to mention the fact that if the power goes out, you can still make mashed potatoes. And you guys have to know, my, and I thought it was just the mountain boy, but I'm realizing that the apple did not fall far from the tree. That boy, we can be out hiking 20 miles back in somewhere, and he'll say, when we get home, can we make mashed potatoes, or can we have french fries, or can we have a baked potato? And we went hiking this uh, past year, and the mountain boy packed in a five or ten pound bag of potatoes to make sure he could have potatoes while we were camping. So, <laughs> but as you can see, I just made one massive vat of potatoes and it wasn't just for him. So, <laughs> but we are potato mongers. And if the power goes out and you don't have electric tools, it's really important that you do have your hand tools, especially a can opener. You know, most people don't think of that. But having these old tools, you know, we don't skip a beat if something goes on and if, you know, we've been here eight years and we've never been without power. So we're good to go. But if something were to happen, we're also good to go because we have all the hand tools that we could use in our kitchen. So I know I was going really fast here, but do you guys have questions? And what are some of your favorite um, comfort foods that you enjoy making? This is one of my favorite comfort foods. And I've been thinking about this for days now. And I thought, you know what, today's the perfect day to make this because I wasn't feeling good enough to go out. And I thought this would be something I could make while doing everything else I needed to. And also, what are your favorite comfort drinks? I love making different teas this time of year. That's where the hibiscus, ginger, and cinnamon came from. But I would love to know what you guys turn to and what are some of your favorites. Chocolate pie, Rachel says. Oh, I believe that. I haven't had a good chocolate pie in a long time. I made shoe fly cake last night. All right, Angela, let me see if I can do this because it says see more. First of all, she says my daughter has a teen was a teen and she complimented our friend on her smooth and yummy mashed potatoes. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, darn. I can't bring up the whole thing on here for some reason. It doesn't let me do the see more. Ah. All right. So I will read it later and comment on that, Angela. New comfort food is a paste. Oh, Michelle, her paste. Yes. These sound amazing. 
pot pie, shepherd's pie, potato soup, or others. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, soups this time of year and creamy soups. I actually made a potato soup the other night because I it's just that when it gets cold, especially when you're out hunting, you get chilled to the bone. So those kind of foods are so good. And shepherd's pie, yes. And actually, um, well, last night I, I started out, I was going to make shepherd's pie, and I ended up making biscuits and gravy with um, elk burger, and I made a shoe fly cake. We had some guests join us, so I threw that on for everybody, but she said she likes better the ice cream. She likes ice cream. Okay, that's what Angela says, and comfort drink would be coffee or hot chocolate. So the apple did not fall far from the tree then with Mountain Ben either, because Rachel likes hot chocolate, and so does Mountain Ben. I actually found myself some organic, um, non-GMO hot chocolate mixes, which I was so excited. I do make my own, but when we're out, we can. that's something we can do over an open fire. So I was really excited about that, and I was looking for those for Mountain Ben. <laughs> so it's always good to have comfort foods, and it's also good to go after our family's hearts through their bellies. I love, and, and guys, you need to understand, I was not always um, a, a good cook. Uh, and I say that now only because they tell me I'm good cook. But I love being in my kitchen. I love experimenting. And I'm sorry that I didn't give you like exact amounts. I had like a half a half or three quarters of a bag of ten pounds of potatoes that I just throw in. I cut up a huge onion. I threw that in. I'm going to put lots and lots of butter. If I if you haven't gathered that I like a lot of butter, I did. I don't know. I think there's six or seven chicken breasts in here. And then I'll probably just make one batch of the pot pie. Sometimes I'll make two, but I'll probably just make one batch because that'll give me a good amount. Um, but as you can see, I just throw things together. There was a time when I first started out at 18 in an apartment, and I wasn't a good cook. And I was learning, and I was you know, using a lot of processed foods, which makes it convenient. But I'll tell you what, there is nothing better to me than making things from scratch in my kitchen. Yeah, Rachel said you are a good cook, I know. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Yes, Rachel, I wish you could. I could beam you and Michelle and everybody over here right now and we'd sit and have a cup of tea and eat some hot, buttery mashed potatoes before I mixed everything together. <laughs> but I really do love making things from scratch. And I want you guys to realize that, you know, I've improvised something that I, you know, ate as a child and saw my mother making and just learn to just start throwing it together because that way I could feed my guys quicker. You know, oftentimes we're working till dark, we're hunting way past dark, you know, till they get back, until what well, we all get in. Um, so I try to do things that are convenient and easy. Um, slow cooker meals are great if you have hunters also. I can't use a slow cooker this time of year because I'm not guaranteed sunshine. So. I can either cook in my oven and do something um, that needs to cook uh, long and on low heat, or I can use a sun oven. Can we sit near the fire? <laughs> yes, my fire is nice and toasty. She says, I'm cold. We weren't, we aren't running the fireplace until we have someone look at it. Yeah, you mentioned that. So yes, there's nothing better too than your comfort foods, your cozy beverages, and your warm, cozy just, I don't know, it just warms me looking at my flame through my glass window. I love my wood stove. So I know that Michelle does as well. And that's just something very comforting. I love this time of year. Not only because it's beautiful and pretty outside, but it just brings so many things um, to light in our homes. I've got candles burning. Um, I, You know, over the years, I was making candles and selling candles. And then I got sick and I couldn't enjoy... Um, the smelly candles anymore. They just made me sick and put me flat on my back. But I can use unscented candles. So I was so excited. So I've got my candles back out and it just gives that warm glow. And the important thing is, guys, that we need to make sure that we are feeding our own fires, not just the wood stove, that we are doing things that give us joy. Angela says, I love making from scratch too. My husband often likes store bought things. I think his taste buds. I wish I could do the seam more. I could do the seam more before and it would pop the whole thing up, but I can't do that and I don't want it to block you. I'm going to have to gather my iPad. Give me one second. Okay, I'm back. 
I love to be able to respond to people and when I can't read your full message it's kind of hard so let me see if I can bring this up on my iPad without a whole lot of volume and then I can answer some of your questions and see what you guys are saying but make sure that you are taking care of yourselves and that you're feeding your fires and and doing things that give you joy and if there's things I was just listening to the um, boss of the swamp on patreon he's also on YouTube really good inspiring guy he lives off the grid also and uh, uh, we're we're kindred spirits for sure it's really important you know that we take care of ourselves and part of taking care of ourselves is removing negative things and as you, some of you guys may know I've been downsizing and decluttering and that's really a form of taking care of ourselves because we don't realize how much that um, weights us down how much it takes away our joy how how much it removes our inspiration and our creativity and so when you can regain those things, so by removing negative things from our lives and focusing on the positive things in our lives, sure. ah, it's really important is things. So by I certainly don't want to listen to myself here. There we go. Okay, now can I see the comments? I still can't see the comments. What a bummer. All right, so I'm going to have to respond afterwards. Um, addicted to chemicals oh yes okay Angela I'm I'm hearing you that he's addicted to chemicals well and right very possibly so because that's what our processed food is for to um, <laughs> poison us in some ways as well as have us addicted to things sugar is one big one corn syrup but um, oh you're fine you're not long-winded I you're talking to the queen. <laughs> I just, I'm doing it this way. You're typing it. And I just, it just doesn't show right. And you're not the only one. I couldn't see everybody else's either. But it's just really important that we focus on ourselves. And also eating health, healthily. Um, because those things do affect our, our well-being, our mental health. People don't realize. And that's why um, we really focus on a really healthy uh, lifestyle. Not only in living off the grid, but what we eat, where our food comes from. And, and just the simple and the, sim the simplicities of simple living. Our lanterns lit, our wood stove burning, and getting out in the woods. And I've been actually sitting out on my swing and having a fire lately. You know, we get so busy, we stop doing the things that give us joy and, and give us enjoyment. And I just hope that you guys take time to do that kind of thing. Because I'll tell you what, over the last probably six weeks, that has been something that has been really strong on my heart is just re learning how to do the things that I really love. And it's a shame we have to do that, but we're all guilty of it. And I just thought I'd get on mainly to show you how to throw this meal together. It's really easy, it's really yummy, and it's really buttery. <laughs> so I'm not going to take up any more of your time on this beautiful Saturday. It's really beautiful and really sunny here. Let me see if I can show you without giving you whiplash or anything else. Let me... Ah! It is just beautiful and sunny. I don't know if you can see the outside real well. Yeah, I think you can. But it is just a gorgeous day. And I'm hoping to get down into my woods down here. The tree line down here is um, about as far, I believe, as my Wi-Fi will reach. And if I can do so, I would like to get out and start showing you some wilderness survival things, learning how to do different types of fire starting and shelter building. Um, I just think that would be fun to do live. So anyway, I'm going to wish you ladies and all of you out there watching and those that have watched after the replay to have a wonderful rest of your day. I'm sending the aromas your way of the curry chicken that is now cooling off and I can cut up and put in my dish and get this baking for my guys. Um, and just have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I always like to end my videos in a prayer, so I'm going to do just that. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this time to get together with these ladies. It's not only um, 
good for them, but it's good for me too. I I I miss my girls. Rachel is 2,500 2, miles away. Michelle is probably 2,000 miles away. And it's just nice when you can't get together with friends and, and be right there in person that you can at least connect in other ways today, which is a blessing. Sometimes technology can be a curse, but just thank you for this opportunity, this time. Thank you for our comfort foods and the things that you provide for us, the comfort drinks and our warmth in our home and the roof over our head and that of my audience. And Lord, I just ask that you be with everyone here if anyone's in need of healing or uh, just... Uh, your loving arms, please, Lord, just wrap them around them and be with them. And, Lord, I just thank you for all that you're going to do in all of our lives. And I ask this in your holy and precious name. Amen. All right, guys. Oh, hello, Tammy. I am just finished my prayer so you can watch the replay. I'm getting ready to throw my baked dinner in the oven so that my guys can enjoy it before too long. So guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, Angela. I appreciate that. <laughs> I know you have a blessed day too. I'm sorry that you missed it, but I will see you on Wednesday for sure. Well, not positively this Wednesday, but for certain the following. Um, I, By the way, I always do a Wednesday Facebook Live at 10.30 Pacific Time. Um, the only reason I won't be on this week possibly is because we are hunting and trying to fill our freezer, and that is a priority. So after this week, I will be back on on my regular schedule. But if I miss you Wednesday, I will jump on when I can Thursday. So guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. Have a wonderful weekend, and God bless.